Hi, I'm Alex McCord, and welcome to The Real Deal on the Stir.com. This week, we kick off our five days a week programming, Monday through Friday, so be sure and follow The Real Deal Alex on Twitter for every new episode, Monday through Friday. Today, we've got two premieres and sneak peeks. Bravo's Candy's Wedding and WeTV's Marriage Boot Camp both kicked off this weekend, as well as a sneak peek of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, including new cast members! <laughs> Let's talk Candy's wedding and a crafty viewer grab by Bravo. Will it work? For those who record everything, like me, I was in for a surprise when I logged into my DVR lineup because I did not need to record Candy's wedding. My DVR had done it for me. Why? In the channel lineup, Candy's show is titled The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, out of all the wedding spin-offs we have ever seen, this is the first one to have its parent show in the title. Bethany, Kim, Tamara, and Nene all had standalone titles. Now this could mean one of two things. One, Bravo are worried about Candy's ratings, and they should be because her first spinoff did not do very well with viewers. Or two, the network wants to cash in on the record ratings of Atlanta's last season, while viewers are fresh off the season, hungry for more, ready to see more of the Atlanta ladies. Or it could be both. In any case, let's talk content. From where I sit, this could possibly be the best wedding spinoff ever. Why? Let's break it down. Straight out of the gate, we have over-the-top drama, but it's not between the bride and groom. Contrastingly, in Nene's wedding spinoff, it was all about Nene reconciling with Greg, lots of husband and wife-to-be fighting. Well, with Candy, the drama so far is with Mama Joyce, her assistant Carmen, everyone but Todd. A staple of wedding shows is beginning to be the prenuptial agreement. We see in the super tease that there will be some conflict between Candy and Todd, but I love it that from the beginning, the bride and groom are united against everybody else. Meddling mothers-in-law, wedding gown designers, um, assistants who don't want to plan the wedding and can't wrangle lions. Well, speaking of assistants, as one who has seen it firsthand, I felt awful for Candy's assistant, Carmen. She said something that really hit me. She doesn't want to go to her son's school because she doesn't want them to know she is his mother. Ay, read between the lines, people. Carmen got an enormous amount of negative publicity during last season's in Atlanta when Mama Joyce tried to fight her. Now she's being dumped on as an incompetent assistant. Carmen is having her life trashed on reality TV, and she's not getting anything out of it. She's not being paid as a housewife. She won't get any of the perks, such as free clothes or jewelry, appearances, deals, opportunities, none of that. There is no upside for Carmen, and I'm not surprised she took off her microphone and bolted. Good for her. Let it be a cautionary tale to any friend of a housewife in real life. And Mama Joyce. Mama Joyce has found her spotlight, and she is working it harder than a stripper on a pole. In the who does that category, Mama takes the trophy for calling Todd's father a pimp and his mother a prostitute. I mean, it's funny as H-E double hockey sticks to watch, but really, who does that? And if you are Todd's mother, do you want to walk into work or the beauty salon this morning? Because I wouldn't. No, ma'am. This was episode one of six. So, viewers, are you hooked? What do you think? Also new this week is Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars on WeTV, and I had my hands over my eyes and mouth the whole time. To me, having been through couples therapy on VH1, Marriage Boot Camp seems like a cross between a game show and a sideshow. Seriously, Jim and Elizabeth Carroll may or may not be good at their jobs as marriage counselors, but we're not going to find out because we're too busy watching the cast chew up the scenery and play gimmicky games. Not that that's a bad thing, it's very entertaining for the viewers, but I don't see the couples, the cast members, actually getting any help or therapy from it. Both Gretchen Rossi and Slate Smiley and Trista and Ryan Sutter seem to be horrified at the show put on by the baddest of the Bad Girls Club, Tanisha Thomas. For therapy shows, this is the choice between the network and the cast. Are you there to put on a show, or are you there to actually get something out of it and improve your marriage? Realistically, the answer should be both. During our time on couples therapy, there were certainly cast members who had no interest in the therapy and only wanted a camera time and attention. In Marriage Boot Camp, we already see that in Tanisha Thomas, and I hope the producers don't go for the easy edit and let her walk away with the whole show. Not only does that make a mockery of the therapy process, but it pushes the other cast members to either confront her or risk being wallflowers at the dance with no airtime. 
I do appreciate that the Marriage Boot Camp staff have clearly done their research. They know a lot about each couple and the show that they've come from. And since all five couples are from reality TV, they have a shared experience. However, episode one was not a safe space for therapy. What with the fake press conference and the headlines plastered over each couple's bedroom. That may have a purpose other than sensationalism, but I have not seen it yet. And also the alcohol. Typically, the networks only ban booze if one of the cast members is an addict, and it made me so thankful that our time on couples therapy was in a dry house. Final thoughts. Whether it is WeTV or VH1, why do all these shows have to paint every couple as on the brink of failure or divorce? Why are celebrity couples not allowed to simply go on a retreat to improve upon what they've got? It seemed to me that Trista and Ryan Sutter fell into that category, and I can only imagine they are horrified watching episode one. Well, what do you think so far? Finally, for those who hung in with Bravo last night, there were two sneak peeks of upcoming summer shows. Game of Crowns was a snooze fest. I didn't like it. I'm not tuning in. But let's talk about the real housewives of the Jersey Shore. Wait, did I get that right? Did anyone else get a Jim Tam laundry vibe from the three newbies on New Jersey? I didn't think it was possible to make Teresa Giudice and Melissa Gorga seem polished and refined, but somehow newcomers Amber Marchese and the Fun Bag Twins managed to do it. The return of Dina Manzo is a wonderful thing, and also strategic on Bravo's part. First, Dina, as godmother to the youngest Judice daughter, is firmly on Teresa's side at a time when Teresa desperately needs allies. Second, did you catch the season teaser? Dina's divorce lawyer is Vicki Ziegler, who is not only a high school pal, but also has her own show premiering on Bravo this week, Untying the Knot. Talk about a crossover goldmine for Bravo. Next, let's talk about what everyone's discussing, Joe and Teresa Judice. By the time this series actually premieres next month, their sentencing will be over, for better or worse. And all season, insiders have complained that Teresa did not do her job this season as a housewife. She did not start enough drama because she was too scared about what's coming up. In the sneak peek, we see Melissa Gorga and her husband watching footage of the Judices going to court. Now, this would have been sort of a producer setup. I'd imagine the producers probably made them a DVD of footage of them walking into court, and they played it at home and then had an organic conversation about it, which would have then led to Melissa phoning Teresa. This is where the success or failure of a reality show depends on the cast's ability to improvise and think of entertaining things to say off the cuff. So what did you think of Teresa's performance so far? I was touched by the sadness in their family. However, I don't believe Teresa for a second that this quote-unquote happens to a lot of people. Yes, there may be other people in the world who commit financial fraud and don't get caught, but most people in the world do not commit financial fraud. I think the best the Judices can hope for is the viewers tuning in to see what happens when you get caught you know, if they embrace their role as a cautionary tale, that could work. If, on the other hand, they spend the season feeling sorry for themselves, they could wind up jobless as well as jailed. Let me know what you thought in the comments. For now, I am Alex McCord, and you're watching The Real Deal on TheStir.com. Tune in tomorrow for an all-new episode, and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube as well. See you next time.